What's up, everybody? It's Mike, the tour guide, playing some more Hunter Call of the Wild, kind of giving some tips and tricks for the beginning. Uh, this game can be really frustrating when you first start. Hopefully, some of this will, will help you out a little bit. The first thing I want to talk about is need zones. Need zones are eating, sleeping, and drinking. All the animals need to do it. This is where they do those things. They're not always this close. Uh, Roosevelt Elk. Roosevelt Elk. Usually it's like there's one here, another one like up here, and then maybe another one over here. Uh, but anyway, these two are really close. So it's kind of, you know, it's an easy way for me to explain what I'm talking about. So if I am arriving at this need zone late, all right, let's just, per, let's make believe that it's 1400. They're probably not going to be there. Where's the next logical place they're going to go? It's the next closest need zone, which this situation happens to be right here. <laughs> Normally, it's going to be way the hell over there. But anyway, I would try to figure out how to approach this need zone. And I kill them. I mean, that's what we're here to do is shoot animals. So <laughs> I would look at my wind direction and it's in my face. So I would probably circle out this way and try to get to that need zone or in between the need zone and try to find those animals traveling to the next logical need zone. Now, next interesting point about need zones. Where is one of the tracks? This is the one I was looking at. So this is a coyote. It's trotting. Trotting does not mean... Um, Walking seems like it's cautious and trotting seems like it's just normal traveling speed. Running means that you have freaked out, you've freaked out the animal and it's, it's taken off. So think, don't look at trotting as, Oh, the thing, it, you know, the, the animal hears me. Look at that as, okay, this thing's traveling to its next need zone. So you don't have to just like see something spooked it. And look, look at that. We were just talking about the need zones and the timing. See, it's 10.03. I spooked them earlier, but now, now they're, they're just starting to come back to that need zone. So there you go. That's a whole herd of Roosevelt elk. Now, if I was 260 meters away, I could pop and pop and pop and keep shooting them and they'd just be idiots they wouldn't they were like hey what happened to steve why did he just fall they they don't know why they're dying <laughs> if you're far enough away they don't hear the gunshot uh so yeah little tidbit to kind of like wedge in there so anyway need zones when you're tracking all right this dude right here turned around i think he got spooked when i spooked those guys so it went back that way but essentially what you want to realize is that if you spook an animal when they're traveling they're most of the time nine times out of ten they're just going to start hauling ass to their next need zone so if you spook an animal and you see them running try to figure out where the next need zone is you can take your time and you can get there and you know that you're going to have like an hour or two once you get close to actually move in right up on them and start start your animal massacre so need zones, in a way, it's, it's a way to figure out a window of when an animal might be at a certain location, but it's also a way for you to remain calm and say, okay, I just spooked that whole herd of Roosevelt elk. They were traveling to their next need zone. I can take my time getting there. I can follow their tracks. I don't have to run as fast as I can after them because if you run, they're just going to keep running and they might bypass their need zone. Who knows? So anyway, take it slow. Use your need zones is kind of like reading the tea leaves as far as where the animals are going to travel. So there you go. Need zones. All right. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is skill points. Skill points are important because they allow you allow basically most of the elements of the game to be a little easier. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is rank up your ambusher. The first one right here, which then opens up, uh, I think the second one, you might need to get this one first. It's because I've opened them up, but essentially what you want to do is you want to get this right here. The sooner, the better. All right. So the more, the merrier. 
increases the monetary reward gained from completing any mission by 5%. You want to get as much money as you can, more bang for the buck, no pun intended. And you can't open that up right away. You got to get the tier zero, at least one of those first. And then after that, I think you can do it. So your second skill point that you get, you can put it on this one right here. All right. So get the money and then switch over to the stalker. The stalker, this one, you're going to be tracking animals a lot more than just like sitting in one spot. If you want to sit in one spot, go ahead. You're going to be, you're going to be bored. That's all I can say. So tracking, you want to learn how to track efficiently and effectively in the beginning. I would rank up all three of those and then switch over to this. Um, all of these are pretty stinking important. So these, not so much. I would stick with this. These two right here. This one. And then the top one right here. Track knowledge. And then probably this one next which is helps you be a little quieter when you're walking. So kind of look at the skill tree. Most of these are just, they're totally useless. Like I, I don't, you know, whatever. If I can see their tracks and I can follow them and I can be a little quieter, I'm happy. Uh, so the next thing is perks. In the beginning, do your rifle. <laughs> you're going to be using your rifle. It's the most efficient way to kill in the beginning to make money. Um, Obviously, you have to start on the first one, muscle memory. As soon as you can open up this one, do it. <laughs> the longer you can hold your breath, the better and more efficiently you can kill. I mean, I'm telling you, like, in the beginning, it's like you hold your breath, <gasps> and then you can't hold. It's like literally like a second and a half, two seconds, maybe one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and then your gun is going all over the place. So in the beginning, you definitely want to be able to hold your breath longer. And then less wobble when you're in aim mode. Uh, so yeah, those two, those, you know, those, these are the most important in the beginning. And then the next thing I want to talk about is your missions. So keep in mind that you can switch back and forth between the two hunting reserves whenever you want. Everything follows you, skill points, money, um, anything that you purchase, you can go on the fly, switch back and forth. I do it when I get, get to a mission and I can't do it and I'm just frustrated. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go here. And then I just switch. I go there and I hunt different animals. It has a different feel. I use it as kind of like a break in between. Uh, and when I started off in the Hirschfelden, I got past the uh, second mission, third mission, which was after you kill the two fallow deer in the cornfield. Then you go to the one where you have to purchase, you have to spend $6,000 on a bow and hunt a fox. Holy crap, it's the most frustrating mission in the world. I was like, screw it. And then I switched to this one. And I did that until they forced me to purchase something. And then I had to make a decision. Which one do I want to purchase? Do I want to purchase the collar for the coyote? Or do I want to purchase the, the bow? Really, the collar is probably more important because it'll make killing the coyote or the fox easier. So kind of use the two different reserves as a way to change things up when you start to get frustrated or bogged down on a mission. It, I, I, I kind of used them to breathe some fresh air into what I was doing. So I don't know. In the beginning, that's really all I can tell you. Oh, other than, uh, you know, weapons. Stick with the uh, the two four three until you can open up the two seventy. Get that, and the two seventy. You know, uh, you can really use the two four three for anything. But if you can open up the seven millimeter, you can automatically buy it. You don't have to like you know rank up a certain point, but you do need thirty six thousand dollars. So if you can get $36,000 early on, purchase the 7 millimeter. you only get one bullet, but you can take down bigger game from further away, and that's more points and more money. So even though you're going to spend all the money that you have on that gun, you, you can make it back pretty quick. So I don't know. That's it. If you have any other questions or you want some more advice, go ahead. Put them in the comments section 
And uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know if you need anything. And until next time, have fun.